Greetings world, we are anonymous. Just recently, the US military fired 59 Tomahawk missiles from the USS Porter and USS Ross warships in the Mediterranean Sea at the Al Sharon Air Base near the western city of Homs last week on Friday, which the Pentagon said was used to store chemical weapons. Moment. We are just getting in uh, some video of these U.S. strikes in Syria, uh, along with this statement from the Pentagon spokesman, Captain Jeff Davis, regarding this strike. And we're going to go ahead and play this video for you as I read from this statement. There you see uh, the attack which was launched at the command of President Trump, uh, who authorized this strike on Syria in retaliation for that chemical attack that we saw earlier in the week. This statement from Captain Jeff Davis uh, talks about the strike being conducted using Tomahawk land attack missiles from the destroyers USS Porter and USS Ross in the eastern Mediterranean Sea. A total of 59 uh, uh, missiles targeted aircraft, hardened aircraft shelters, petroleum and logistical storage, ammunition supply, bunkers, air defense systems, and radars. Now, this is the statement uh, talking about possible collateral damage here. As always, the U.S. took extraordinary measures to avoid civilian casualties and to comply with the law of armed conflict. Every precaution was taken to execute this strike with minimal risk to personnel at the airfield. Uh, this statement goes on to talk about Russian forces were notified in advance of the strike using the established deconfliction line. U.S. military planners took precautions to minimize risk to Russian or Syrian personnel located at the airfield. We are assessing the results of the strike. Initial indications are that this strike has severely damaged or destroyed Syrian aircraft and support infrastructure and equipment at the Sharat airfield, reducing the Syrian government's ability to deliver chemical weapons. The use of chemical weapons against innocent people will not be tolerated. Uh, Charles, let me go to you. Uh, it appears, as we are hearing from the Pentagon, steps were taken to mitigate uh, casualties, civilian casualties, as well as uh, Russian or Syrian casualties as well. However, if in fact, say, Russian forces may have been killed as part of this uh, airstrike on this airfield, what would that potentially do in terms of escalating this conflict? Well, I think if, 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 a Rus if Russian forces were killed, I think it would certainly force Moscow to consider having to respond in some kind of aggressive way. But I think that's precisely why all kinds of various attempts will have been made on the U.S. side to have prevented that kind of a scenario from taking place. I mean, we do know in open source information that um, this specific airbase has housed uh, Russian helicopters almost ever since uh, Russia intervened in Syria. Um, I don't know if those helicopters were still there when the strikes took place, but certainly I think the Department of Defense has made clear that the, uh, the cruise missile strikes tonight very specifically did not target a specific area of the base where Russians were known to have operated. But nevertheless, it's pretty clear, and it's been consistently the case for a long time now, that this has been a base shared between um, the Russian military and the Syrian military. Um, I don't expect any Russians have been killed in this strike. Um, but as I say, if they have, then I think it would force Moscow to, to, to respond in some kind of an aggressive fashion, although I agree with some earlier guests who made it very clear that, uh, it, 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 simply put, Russia would be acting very stupidly and very short-sightedly if it acted directly against the United States. Uh, when, when, when they come up and match up against each other, I don't think the Russians would come out on top. These Tomahawk missiles targeted aircraft hardened aircraft shelters, petroleum and logistical storage, ammunition supply bunkers, air defense systems, and radars, Pentagon spokesman Captain Jeff Davis said in a statement. As always, the U.S. took extraordinary measures to avoid civilian casualties and to comply with the law of armed conflict. Additionally, Russian forces were notified in advance of the strike, according to the Pentagon. U.S. military planners took precautions to minimize risk to Russian or Syrian personnel located at the airfield, Davis said. Despite this, Russia had responded saying the strikes violated international law and would do significant damage to relations between Russia and the U.S. The Russian news agency Interfax reported comments from the Kremlin which said the strikes had happened under a far-fetched pretext.
Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that President Vladimir Putin believed the U.S. attacks on Syria showed aggression against a sovereign state. Donald Trump had announced the attack from his Florida resort, Mare Lago, where he was meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. This was in response to Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad's horrible chemical weapon attack, which sadly took the lives of 86 people including 33 children earlier that week. This was what provoked the president to make the following statement. My fellow Americans, on Tuesday, Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad launched a horrible chemical weapons attack on innocent civilians. Using a deadly nerve agent, Assad choked out the lives of helpless men, women, and children. It was a slow and brutal death for so many. Even beautiful babies were cruelly murdered in this very barbaric attack. No child of God should ever suffer such horror. Tonight, I ordered a targeted military strike on the airfield in Syria from where the chemical attack was launched. It is in this vital national security interest of the United States to prevent and deter the spread and use of deadly chemical weapons. There can be no dispute that Syria used banned chemical weapons, violated its obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention, and ignored the urging of the UN Security Council. Years of previous attempts at changing Assad's behavior have all failed and failed very dramatically. As a result, the refugee crisis continues to deepen, and the region continues to destabilize, threatening the United States and its allies. Tonight, I call on all civilized nations to join us in seeking to end the slaughter and bloodshed in Syria, and also to end terrorism of all kinds and all types. We ask for God's wisdom as we face the challenge of our very troubled world. We pray for the lives of the wounded and for the souls of those who have passed. And we hope that as long as America stands for justice, then peace and harmony will, in the end, prevail. Good night, and God bless America and the entire world. Thank you. We don't believe this is the start of World War III, but we still urge Donald Trump to try and reduce the tensions between him and Putin. Otherwise, this could eventually lead on to bigger issues such as a possible conflict with each other. We'd also like him to be a bit less careless with the strikes, even though a U.S. defense official called it a one-off. An Assyrian state news agency claimed that nine civilians including four children were killed, when innocent people shouldn't have to sacrifice their lives because of their country leader's actions. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.